In my lifelong quest to get people to stop using the dominant 7-5 chord, we have arrived here. I think this is actually one of the most underrated chords. I never see anybody use this chord, but it's something everybody should know. And it's interesting because it doesn't have like a definitive name. I've heard a lot of people name this something differently. So we're actually gonna start with, we're gonna take a C major chord right here, just the fifth fret, D, G, and B string. And we're gonna think of this as being a chord in the key of F. All right, so F, G, A, B flat, C. So this is the five chord. A lot of times you'd see like a C7. Go back to F. But there's something kind of raunchy dirty about that dominant seven chord, which is fine for a lot of a lot of genres. But I just, you know, I'm a man of I'm a man of great beauty, as all of you know. So we're gonna try to make this a little prettier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the fifth fret. And then we're gonna have your pinky grab the eighth fret on the A string. So this could be looked at as a C over F, okay? But I think there's something really pretty about that that leads you back to the one chord in a much different way, which essentially is the same function. It's still a five to a one. But again, it just depends on how you look at it. In fact, I've always looked at this as the root note being here, the F, and then having a C major on top. So it's like, okay, a C major over F, we have a C, an E, a G, and an F. If you think of F as being the root note, which again, if you know you, you need some help with your music theory, check out my Patreon for sure, but if we have an F, and then we have this right here, like an F, C, E, G, I actually kind of think of that as an F major nine, where we leave the third out. So there's some debate over which really, you know, which really works there as far as how you want to name it, but it has a lot of utility. Now, the one tough thing about this is that reach, right? That pinky to that pointer finger reach. That's tough. If you suck at using your pinky, this might not be the one for you, but that doesn't mean you can't use it because you can actually open a string and do it like this, okay? so. The same thing would apply. Let's do it in, let's think of a B major chord, just back it up right here, so 4-4. Four, four. And then if we have 7-4-4-4, four, 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 we can actually replace this with the lower E, so E. And then essentially what that is using is it's bringing you back to itself as a one chord, right? Right, there's B dominant 7 to one, oh, this is B over E, as one, and you know, in, in a way, it makes it pretty, because you have that major nine kind of sound, what I'm perceiving as a major nine sound, but it's a good way to point you to where you already are, so it's really easy to remember, because it's like, all right, you know, I've got this song, I don't know where I'm, I don't know, I'm looking for a chord to bring me back to a certain other chord, no matter what it is, let's say it's a G chord, right? We want to get back home to G. It's like, all right, all I have to do is find a G on the A string, which if you know your frets, that's the 10th fret, and then have that little chord shape. So 10A, seven all the way down, which happens to be the bottom of a D major chord, but You don't even have to go the full way because I get it. It's a little difficult to kind of get good tone out of all those, especially on an acoustic guitar. But it's a really easy way to just take one piece of information, the next highest octave root note, right? And then add a little chord on top of it, a major triad on top of it. I mean, how classy does it sound? Come on. It doesn't get any classier than that. Thanks for watching.